Hi, I'm Mark Gaylor and I'm a Sony Imaging Ambassador and I'd like to talk to you about the subject recognition that we now have on the Alpha 7 R5 camera. Now a lot of the reviewers reviewing the new Alpha 7 R5 camera didn't really have a lot of time to go into this feature in depth. There are many options in this new feature and I wanted to create this uh, separate video now that we've done and dusted with those camera reviews to go into this topic in a little bit more detail. Now a lot of people with other alpha cameras are saying will we get this uh, subject recognition in other alpha cameras via a firmware update but of course we have to understand that the AI processing unit of the Alpha 7R5 is doing a lot of this work not just the firmware so we can't expect the firmware update uh, for other cameras to also include the AI processing unit. Okay so let's go into this in a little bit more detail. One of the other questions I'm hearing on the forums is where does the um, AI, the artificial intelligence or deep learning take place. Now some people are saying that uh, the camera can learn from the shooting experiences where actually I think that the deep learning has all taken place in Japan. Now the camera does appear to think through a subject recognition to try and work out where the body is then shift the priority towards the head and then to the eye. But is the camera learning from this experience? And I don't think that would be the case. Uh, if that was the case we'd be invited to um, rate the camera success at finding the eye on a subject target and uh, obviously we're not being asked to respond to that so although the camera seems to be thinking on the job it isn't actually learning from that process we would need further firmware updates to improve the subject recognition after this initial version of the camera well that's my understanding anyway to give you an idea of what I think Think is happening for instance here at the zoo the camera recognizes the back of the gorilla as an animal it then highlights the head and moves over to what it thinks is the eye in this case the nostril in the center image and then realizes the camera has now a better idea of where the eye is in the third and final shot and moves the focus to that eye so there appears to be some improvement in the AF as uh, the time progresses and the camera gets more information about what it it is looking at but I don't think the camera is learning from this experience so I don't think it will be better with gorillas the next time it sees gorillas. Now to show um, perhaps an animal that the uh, Sony Japan didn't uh, do any machine learning with is this example that I used in my review of a Gippsland water dragon. Now this is uh, quite a rare animal in Australia only and so we're looking uh, with the camera first recognizing that this is an animal moving the focus to the head. Um, the water dragon moves to look towards the camera. It's still uh, identifying the head but not moving over to the eye. Another second transpires and then the camera goes actually I think I know where the eye is. I'll shift the focus from the front of the nose over to that eye. So you can see the camera working through this process of looking for the optimum place to place the focus point. And I think this is a very valuable addition uh, to the camera's AF systems in this case. Of course, the camera needs some input from humans in order to um, choose the most appropriate target in uh, the frame that you're framing up. So we will have to uh, move the, uh, the recognition target from humans to animals, from animals to insects, planes, trains and automobiles when the need requires. The camera won't know what it is that you're trying to prioritize, so we have to tell the camera by changing the recognition target to what it is inside the frame that we now need to draw the focus towards. Now just a link on this particular slide that I'll put in the information section below the movie is we do have a supporting website by Sony that goes into this subject to recognition in a little bit more detail and uh, as I said you'll find that link uh, below this video. 
One of the things that the camera now does, which is a great addition and is an improvement to the AI, I think is the auto switch between animals and birds. Now I know a bird is strictly uh, an animal as well, but we get that auto switch if the camera needs to go from an animal and then we start framing a bird. We don't need to go into the uh, uh, target recognition and then change that. The camera will do that automatically. One may then say, well, why do we have animals and birds as a choice as well? And those are for those instances where you'll get a frame with both an animal, maybe a hippopotamus and also a bird. And you've got to try and prioritize which one the camera should prioritize its focus towards. So we will get those individual targets as well. And I'll go into this in a little bit more detail shortly. First off, it is actually quite quick to change the recognition target. Now we'll find the, the recognition target menu in the FN menu. So we don't need to deep dive into the main menus in order to change the recognition target. Now the way I would recommend that you do this is simply press the FN button. And you can do this with the, cam with the camera's finder at your eye. Then use the multi-selector or joystick to highlight uh, the recognition target without depressing that uh, multi-selector in, which would then give you uh, access to some menu options, we can simply just turn the front dial to cycle between different recognition targets. It is exceptionally quick and should only take a second or two to move from maybe human to animal bird and or further on through those choices to insect or planes, trains and automobiles. Now, Sony are actually quoting a 40% increased performance for animal recognition. Now, I don't know where they plucked this figure out of. For instance, the, um, the example on the left side, I don't think my previous alpha cameras would have done this at all. So it's more than 100% improvement. We're uh, getting the camera to spot the back of the head of a meerkat without any eyes visible. So this is a giant leap forward for the subject recognition in this instance. I think... Uh, where we are going to get that 40% improvement is perhaps in that center illustration image where we get an unusual vantage point on the head of this animal. Uh, the meerkat is looking directly upwards and yet the camera can still work out that it is the head of an animal and also work out where the eye is inside of that head position. And of course the one on the right also illustrates the fact that it understands about animal heads not just eyes when visible and will work out that even though the eyes in very deep shadow there, it will still um, highlight uh, the focus point where the eye is most likely to be in uh, that meerkat's head there. And where, of course, it gets um, completely surprising and you're going to have that uh, OMG moment is, uh, and this is a, an interesting game to play at a zoo, is hide the animal and see if the Alpha 7 R5 can find it. Such as the example on the left, that's quite clear that uh, most cameras would pick the animal IAF, uh, no problem at all. But here I've uh, concealed the, uh, the lion behind a very large obstacle, uh, a tree in the foreground, and the line is in deep shadow and yet we still highlight uh, the front of the nose and if that eye ever became visible it would shift from the head to the eye automatically. So this is really a much more than a 40% improvement in buy books. This is the, uh, the camera really uh, getting to grips with trying to work out where the animal is in your frame. Now, as I said, if we can um, get to the recognition target by pressing the FN button and then highlighting the recognition target with that multi-selector, if we were to depress that multi-selector, we will go into a slightly different um, user interface menus here now. And we can move to the right, again, using either the right side of the uh, control wheel or a cycling right with that uh, multi-selector to look at options for that recognition target. Now we just get one set of options for human and that is the tracking shift range which is currently set to standard but we can modify that uh, between one and five settings and I'll go into this in a little bit more detail very shortly.
If we want to get more options to do with the uh, subject recognition, we will deep dive into the main menus. You'll go to the AFMF menu, you'll come down to page three, and there you'll have lots of options for to do with subject recognition, which you won't get by just going to it from the FN menu. If I do stay with the recognition target just for very briefly, you'll see that we can also cycle between the different uh, recognition targets here, but we can also move over at any time in the main menus to look at the other options to do with the recognition target. Now we only had one set of options to do with the human, but you can see we have um, five sets of options with uh, the animal um, here that we're looking at. And that, that will also go for um, bird as well, an animal stroke bird. We'll get uh, three sets of options for car, train and plane and also insect as well. And I'll go into this in more detail very shortly as well. First off, in the main menus, let's just take a look at one of the other options that we have for the subject recognition, and that is subject recognition frame display. If you turn your attention over to the right side illustration of these three women, we can see that um, that frame display is um, draws a box around each of the recognized human faces. Now, the one either side of the center is a gray, box, the one in the center is a white box that will become the priority face if we then uh, half depress the shutter release or we press the AF on button assigned to AF on. And so that is telling you which will become the priority face when we initiate the focus. Now, um, if uh, at any time uh, you see a, a frame display around a face, but you're using a spot AF point, if that spot AF point doesn't touch that frame display, then that will still not be the priority face. Just because the frame recognizes a human face, if, the, uh, if your chosen uh, AF area, such as a spot, is outside of that frame, you will not initiate and prioritize that face. But as soon as you move that uh, spot focus point and touch the frame display, then that will become the priority when you initiate the focus by half pressing the shutter release button or using the AF on button. Okay, and then that frame display will disappear momentarily and then we'll either get um, the body, the head, or in this case, uh, we go through to the IAF feature. What I'm going to do now is uh, just show you how we can use the tracking expand spot to highlight a face that might not be in the center of the frame. So if I just play this uh, just short demonstration, here we can see that is the center, but if I move the spot AF point over to the right, that becomes the priority. Move it over to the left, that becomes the priority. I then half press the shutter release and then the IAF goes to the face on the left. So we can use that um, spot AF point to prioritize one specific face when multiple faces uh, are identified within that frame. One of the great things about having that uh, body and head recognition in the new AI um, focus uh, of the Alpha 7R5 is sometimes if we don't see a clear head or an eye, the camera still recognizes the human body because of the arms and legs and shoulders, and then it can quite quickly work out where the head is. Even though there's no legs uh, visible on these motorcyclists riding towards me, it's still got enough to know that there is a human sitting aboard this motorcycle and it works out that the head is inside that crash helmet and then it also gives you an approximate placing of where the eye would be even though it is concealed behind that dark visor and this really is a good indication of how clever the AF, AF is with this subject recognition. Because I'm working with very very shallow depth of field with this 135 prime at maximum aperture we push the focus beyond the front of the motorcycle and straight back to the rider's head, which is exactly where it needs to be in this particular shot. Okay, one of the great things about the, the new um, uh, subject recognition on the Alpha 7R5 is there are instances where we don't have to chase a subject around with a spot focus point. We can just leave it uh, set to wide AF. We still have control over which face 
to prioritize even though we're not doing that. Let's first off, we'll just show how we can, even with wide, we can prioritize a uh, different face. As I said, it will prioritize the face in the center of the frame and also it uses a proximity algorithm as well. So if it's center and close, that will definitely be the priority. And as we can see, that is the priority. And even though it's no longer in the center, it'll still track that to the edge. When it gets sufficiently over to the edge and I release the focus and then prioritize what, what now is in the center, it'll shift the priority to the center face. So this is, means that we don't have to switch over to a spot. I can, I can acquire a subject that's in the center, track it right to the edge of the frame, and then whatever is in the center now, I can just release focus acquisition, reacquire focus on what is now in the center of the frame. Another way of dealing with the wide focus area and prioritizing a different subject uh, is as follows. First off is we can basically uh, start um, tracking at any time with a focus tracking area such as AF tracking wide. And uh, But if I ever want to start tracking maybe the subject on the left or the right side of the frame, uh, and this is new to the Alpha 7R5, I can just use the multi selector, press to the left, and what we'll see now is the focus frame or subject frame display on the left now has an orange bar underneath that frame display. It turns to a white um, a frame, a subject frame display, and that now will become the priority if I start tracking by pressing the uh, multi selector in. At any time, I can release that subject tracking by pressing the multi selector in and then reacquire a different subject. Now for owners of older Alpha cameras who are upgrading to the Alpha 7R5, maybe you're upgrading from an Alpha 7.3 or an Alpha 7R3, um, what you are getting is AF tracking with um, an animal uh, AF. So you don't have to choose AF tracking uh, or animal IF, you're basically getting the two combined. And we also, uh, again, another advantage is we are getting that auto switch um, between animal and birds, and that is a step up even above and beyond cameras such as the Alpha 1 and the Alpha 7.4, which have bird IF but doesn't auto switch from animal. And of course, one of the um, advantages for the Alpha 7 R R5, it's not just bird IAF, it's bird acquisition. It, it knows what a bird is, even if it can't see the eye. So in this case, with a wide focus area, it sees that bird behind uh, that foreground obstacle, the, the green grass that's in front of that bird, and it still punches the focus back towards the bird. We can see that big green uh, box circling or going around the bird which is the basically the body acquisition. So it doesn't yet uh, know where the head is or the eye is, but as soon as the bird turns towards the camera and the eye is visible, it switches to the head and then very quickly to the eye in order to get uh, prioritize the focus exactly where it needs to be. This is going to be really good news for a lot of bird photographers, especially when you're working with birds that may be um, nuzzling their heads in, um, uh, in amongst their feathers or b um, beneath their wings. The, uh, the camera is always going to be ready for you to capture the decisive moment of your shot because it understands where the bird is all of the time, where the head is when that's visible, and then when the eye is visible, it'll just prioritize that as well. So this is going just to increase your hit rate when doing bird photography with the Alpha 7 R5. For me, one of the uh, the great ways of showcasing the AI was with the new insect subject uh, recognition is that um, uh, this uh, can be very difficult to acquire because we're working with such shallow depth of field. I'm using the 100-400 GM because it's got a very good close focusing distance, a 0.35 magnification. So this image is hardly being cropped at all, but it shows how much of the butterfly will fill the frame and the depth of field is very very shallow but the AI autofocus is doing all of the work 
and uh, I'm still using a wide focus area but even though the flower is in front of the insect it knows that the insect is the priority and pushes that focus back to exactly where it needs to be and the hit rate was really quite remarkable um, the vast majority of the images had the focus where it needs to be sometimes occasionally it would just have the whole insect as the recognition target but most of the time the, um, the recognition would move to the head as soon as it had a clearer idea of the shape and position of that insect. Now, um, with testing with car and train, I think there's it's a broader section than just cars or trains because uh, I uh, tested this in the review period on motorcycles. Now, when the motorcycles were coming directly towards the camera, the, uh, the car and train subject recognition didn't actually recognize the motorcycle at all. And that's because I think the wheels were basically just um, the front view of the wheel and didn't look uh, oval to the camera uh, programming. And so I would use um, human recognition for that and it would push beyond the front of the motorcycle to the rider in those instances. But as soon as the uh, we, we shift the angle of view to the motorcycle so they're coming three quarters on or side on, then the car and train subject recognition would recognize the motorcycle as the vehicle. Basically, it is going to start picking up the fact that this has wheels. Uh, interestingly, in this example here, I'm using the uh, uh, the Sony software to show where the focus point actually is. We can see it's highlighted both of these motor motorcycles simultaneously because if you count the wheels, it's four wheels, therefore it must be a car in the subject recognition car train category. Okay, but that will do in this instance. If we go into the rest subject recognition uh, menu settings, and this is where I said a lot of reviewers would just simply not have had enough time to go into a detailed breakdown of all of the options that we have for these. Now, I'd like to think AI gave us less work, but uh, you are going to spend, have to spend a little bit of time just working out what is your priority when using these subject recognition targets. Okay, now for um, the humans, there is just the tracking sheet range and we have the most number of options more than 20 options for animal bird and um, animal and bird and then we got three sets of choices uh, for the insect um, car train and then plane now I will go into these in a little bit of detail but you are going to learn uh, when and why you would change these settings to different uh, settings to the default as time uh, moves forward. Okay, tracking shift range. This is an interesting one. I'm tracking uh, a bicycle. I didn't have the vehicle recognition on the car train. So I'm tracking um, a particular part of the cycle. Now tracking shift range, if I've got a human selected, it would shift from tracking the bicycle to the human if the human gets close to the tracking frame. So how close? That is controlled by tracking shift range, one being narrow, five being wide. Now, how far away from the focus area or the tracking frame? Okay, this is, you're going to have to practice over time to work out uh, how narrow is narrow and how wide is wide. Perhaps one of the most confusing one of these options that I'm going to talk about now is the tracking persistence level. This is not available for humans, just um, the animals and birds. And what we're, what we're doing here now is we're trying to work out how sticky your setting is to that subject. How many obstacles can obscure your target before the camera gives up and then chooses a different subject to focus on. Now with this uh, lemur behind the leaves, I'm going for five locked on. Now, the confusing thing for Sony's um, naming of these uh, one to five settings here is we have something called tracking sensitivity, which is a system wide sensitivity setting for focus. Now, uh, I, for sports shooting, when I want it to stay with that subject for as long as possible, i.e. I want the focus as sticky as possible, number one is locked on. 
they've reversed the numbering system for tracking persistence level which is now for the animals and now number five is locked on now I'm going to hazard a guess and say that the tracking persistence level will override the tracking sensitivity settings when uh, an animal is recognized but again more testing will have to see how a tracking sensitivity and tracking persistence play well together to give you an example of when tracking persistence so you would reduce that from number five locked on to number one is maybe when we've got a herd of uh, zebras and you don't want it to just keep prioritizing the ear of one zebra even though it's gone behind other zebras in the herd you will almost certainly want the camera to shift to a better target and this is where any zebra will do basically and you want the camera to give up on your target you first acquired and uh, select a new zebra um, quite quickly. This is where you'll lower the tracking persistence level um, to number one, not locked on. Uh, a different uh, example would be if you're now in a chase situation where you're prioritizing one lion, now you don't want the camera to switch to any zebra at all, only the lion will do, and then you would uh, change from the tracking persistence level one to tracking persistence level number five, locked on, only the lion will do, even if we can only see part of the lion behind the zebra in the chase. Okay, moving on to a new area now, recognition sensitivity. There are going to be times where the camera thinks it can see an animal, maybe in tree bark or a texture, and it starts um, tracking uh, something that is not an animal at all. This is where recognition sensitivity will come into play. So if you're constantly getting false recognitions, you're going to want the uh, recognition sensitivity set to low. If you're tra trying to pick up an animal that the camera is uh, not immediately recognizing, then you might want to shift that up to number five, high. This is where you're getting the recognition priority settings. This is if you're staying in animal bird, you're not switching to animal or switching from animal to bird. Um, you want the camera to prioritize a particular animal or the birds and so that recognition priority settings you can set to auto and let the camera make the decision for you or you can set it to priority on animals or priority on birds and in this case uh, the bird on the hippopotamus is the priority so you might want to go from auto to priority on birds or just switch uh, the recognition target to birds. Now we do have recognition parts here. We've got eye, head, head, body, eye, head, eye. Okay, I'm not too sure why you would probably start uh, removing the body from the recognition because it will automatically switch to the eye if it finds the eye. And in this case where we don't have a head uh, or an eye, I think I'd still like um, the body as part of the algorithms. I still want the camera to recognize this is a target because it's a bird, it's got wings, even though there's, it's a headless bird. Well, momentarily headless anyway. Again, I will point out um, there's a link to uh, a Sony website which goes into more detail. Now, I'm going to have to be perfectly honest and say I found Sony's description of some of these sometimes useful, sometimes confusing. And sometimes I didn't agree with some of their choices. I sometimes Sony, this Sony website page was talking about uh, focus areas when I didn't really think the um, specifying a focus area was really important to the algorithms that the camera was using to choose the subject. So uh, go into this and take a look. But as I said, it, uh, I didn't find it 100% useful. Now for, as again, uh, just a reminder, if you are coming up from an older uh, model alpha, such as the third generation, you are going to notice a massive improvement. Just the, the ability to have AF tracking, which is already more reliable than the lock-on AF focus areas of that third generation of alphas, is this is going to be a, a godsend. You're going to be able to track a fast-moving animal coming towards the camera and reliably have the camera push beyond the 
nose uh, towards the eyes when we're working with that shallow depth of field. And this is um, becomes especially useful when the animal is in close proximity to the camera. And perhaps even more useful than the animals is the bird IAF, which uh, again, if the um, if the eye is reasonably distinctive then it'll push beyond the head to the eye and in some instances you can be in a wide focus area even with tree branches um, very close to the camera and uh, the camera can see the bird behind the branches and without you uh, dropping into a spot AF point it will push the focus back to the bird as you can see from the example in the uh, bottom right hand corner here. Now, many of you will probably not need me to say this, but I'll say this anyway. Just remember when the, the camera acquires focus on one subject, it can only put the focus distance at that precise distance. So if you're looking for multiple subjects, such as multiple birds to be in sharp focus, you can't focus on two different distances at the same time. So you either have to get those uh, birds at the same distance from the camera or start stopping the aperture down to increase your depth of field to stand any chance of having having more than one bird or more than one animal in sharp focus. Now, um, some people will be shocked to um, hear me mention this, but the AI won't be 100% reliable. Uh, you might have gone weeks without um, having a failed attempt, but sooner or later that AI will fail to recognize your subject for whatever reason. And so you're always going to need a full back position. It's a bit like somebody who's only ever driven um, cars with uh, an auto gear change. Sooner or later you're going to be presented with a camera, uh, uh, sorry, a car without uh, an auto gearbox and you are going to have to drive this manually shifting the gears. So you are going to know a little bit how to drive focus when AI fails to recognize your subject. Now I suspect the A7R5 would have nailed this shot. I think it would have found the eyes in this little dog even though the eyes are barely visible behind the fur. But if you were found yourself in this position and the IAF didn't kick in and maybe the head uh, focus didn't kick in, what is your fallback position? So I'll just outline my fallback positions in this instance. First off, just uh, press um, the, uh, the C2 key on top of the camera, which is your focus area by default, and then just uh, wind it from um, zone or wide into a spot AF point and put the spot on your target. So even if the ca uh, camera doesn't know it's a bird, you put in the spot if it's got any edges of good contrast, it'll start tracking that pattern, that texture, that distance. It doesn't always need to know it's a bird to track that subject. Another one is um, DMF it. A new feature for the Alpha 7 R5 is it doesn't really matter if our lens doesn't have uh, the option for full-time DMF, such as the uh, 70 to 200 GM2, we can do DMF on all of our Sony lenses. So if I want to shift um, the focus from the woman in the front to maybe the uh, child in the background, I can just turn the focus ring, push the focus much further away, and then let the autofocus uh, pick up on that more distant subject, even though it's very, very close to the original subject. Now, as I said, uh, a few very premium lenses have this full-time DMF, but now it just means that we don't need one of these lenses, the 400 or 600 GM primes or the new 7200 Mark II. We can DMF uh, pretty much any, uh, and it becomes particularly useful when we're working with very shallow depth of field, because occasionally you'll want to point the camera at something and the camera says, I can't actually see anything to focus on because your focus distance is set to infinity or very, very close to the camera and that's not where your subject is. So simply turn the focus ring and let the camera see the subject and go, oh, I'm set for insect recognition. There's my insect and I'll start taking over from the photographer right about now. 
finally, just one more point is there are going to be times when you just want to suspend the subject recognition. Maybe it's just kicking in and you really don't need it to be working in this instance. So if this happens a lot, you can actually assign a custom key to um, disable the subject recognition. You can have this set to toggle, just one press, and then uh, recognition is disabled, and then one press again and it's enabled. Or you can have it as a hold button, which as long as you're holding that custom key, the subject recognition won't uh, kick in. And so this uh, is going to be something that just a few photographers will probably want to assign to a custom key uh, if they're finding subject recognition is great 95% of the time, but it's better just uh, put on the shelf for the other 5% of the time. If you found this useful, then you might also find my 600 page ebook for the Alpha 7 R5 useful as well. And you can download this by um, going to my uh, patreon.com forward slash Mark Gaylor Alpha support channel. Uh, one month is just 10 US dollars and you can download as many ebooks as you like. And there are no contracts or commitments, so you can unsubscribe and only uh, pay that single $10 subscription fee. For patrons who decide to hang about for more than one month, there is a whole range of ebooks. Uh, for Premium Plus patrons, there's a Q&A forum, there's member-only seminars, over 20 hours of patron-only videos to watch. Uh, there's raw files for all of my cam uh, camera and lens reviews that you can download to um, see what the quality of that camera sensor or, or that lens is capable of achieving because you have the raw file. You don't have to uh, see my process files to make up your own mild. And the other thing is, is I can also set up your camera exactly the way that I outline in the ebook by providing you with a cam set file. These are available for the Alpha 7 R4, Alpha 7 R4A, Alpha 1, Alpha 7 IV, and of course the new Alpha 7 R5. And if you don't have an Alpha 7 R5 yet, I've probably got you covered. I've been writing these uh, extended ebooks uh, since uh, 2018, I think. So all pretty much all late model cameras except the A7S 3 and FX3 are pretty much uh, covered. OK, I'm Mark Gaylor, Sony Imaging Ambassador. Just a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to hear future videos.